I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the CCP's Belt and Road strategy, but the Australians have been party to it and for no longer, no longer. What it is, is the Chinese Communist Party buying up a sizable amount of infrastructure, literal infrastructure, not Kirsten Gillibrand's interpretation that everything is infrastructure. No, uh, the shipping ports, buildings, getting their interest in other sectors as well buying up whatever they can getting a sizable influence and then being able to take over that sector of the economy without firing a single shot it's going on throughout the entire world and australia has been party to this more or less through just brute force and through the ccp coming in seeing an opening buying it up not being able to do anything about it because i'm a private company right and it's been a drain it's been a drain on locals because they see what's going on there. I've been talking with a couple of them as well, a couple of Australians out there. And uh, yeah, they're saying that the influence is getting pretty scary. So to see this come up is terrific. And I'm glad to see it. And I hope more countries around the world adopt this as well. It might lead to the CCP getting a little bit more agitated. So if we see them starting to saber rattle with any other country, if they start encroaching a little bit more in India, that'll be a good sign. Well, not really a good sign, but that'll be a sign that uh, this is definitely affecting them. And if they're going to be pushing into their fishing waters or even agitating with Japan, same thing. I wish Trudeau would take this lead and stop fucking capitulating to them but uh, that's not highly likely but we got to celebrate the victories wherever they come and especially with our australian counterparts this is nothing but a victory australian foreign minister maurice payne i think that that is an apt description of a woman who would produce that picture she means business on april 21st officially cancelled the state of victoria's controversial belt and road initiative bri deals with beijing saying they weren't consistent with national interest yep because as weird as australia is sometimes they are still a capitalist economy and the tenets of communism do not coexist with one another. Payne exercised recently granted powers under Australia's Foreign Relation Act to axe four deals in total, all between the Victorian state government and foreign regimes, including Iran, Syria, and China. None of those are bad things whatsoever. You should not be funding or you not you should not be funding by people who hate your guts. Two shredded deals were signed by Premier Daniel Andrews and Beijing's National Development and Reform Commission. Nothing sounds creepy about that whatsoever. The first agreement, a 2018 Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, saw Victoria pledge to work on infrastructure projects within the Chinese regime's Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road Initiative, commonly known as the BRI. And that, if you pull that up, a map around the world the countries that the ccp are targeting uh it's easier to list the countries that they aren't targeting if we're being completely fair and honest the second axe the victoria deal was a 2019 framework agreed on jointly promoting the bri why i guess somebody was getting two stacks Payne also canceled a 2004 mou between victoria's department of education and training thank god mitigate the damage clearly Something's already been done in the past 17 years at this point. God, that's weird to believe. In training and the Islamic Republic of Iran and a 20, oh, sorry, 1999 protocol of scientific cooperation between the same department and the Syrian Arab Republic. Yeah, probably because you're light years more advanced. They're probably like, oh, this is a really nice stone. I can probably throw it at my wife if she decides that she's going to be looking at somebody else. I consider these four agreements to be inconsistent with Australia's foreign policy or adverse to our foreign relations in line with the relevant tests under the act. Payne said in a statement, God bless you, woman. Never thought I'd say that. Uh, the federal government's Foreign Relations Act also forced the Victorian state government to hand out documents related to a third secret deal signed between the state and the Chinese regime. That deal was signed in March of 2017, 18 months before the first BRI deal, Belt Road Initiative deal, was signed. The secret MOU committed to the state to work with Beijing on Victorian infrastructure projects through the public-private partnership, a different PPP. Andrews maintained that uh, he would still like to get paid. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, deals with China, including the BRI, pose no threat to national security. Ah, getting in bed with communists. Ugh. 
God damn it, stand up for your country, you fucking balding-headed dope. The messy hair isn't fooling anybody. You, my friend, are as bald as an onion. But pose no threat national security and we're generating employment opportunities. No, you could just do that yourself or maybe partner with a country that isn't communist and might have everybody's best intentions in mind. I don't know. I've always seen these agreements and all of our arrangements, not just with any one country, but with all different countries, different states, different provinces, different regions, different cities, different towns, different streets, different cul-de-sacs. We get it. We have the relationships with. They've always been about a passport to export. That right there is quite the political statement. That is saying a lot of things without saying anything. These agreements have been about business. Thanks, dunce. Under the BRI, Beijing is reported to significantly undercut foreign companies for infrastructure bids and provide unserviceable loans to developing countries that can barely afford the projects. It sounds exactly like what happened with the housing bubble crisis in 2008, but uh, it's just with every other country in the world. Meanwhile, the Chinese can't even perform restorative maintenance on their own infrastructure like the Three Rivers Dam. Yeah, that's a... May or may not burst this year, depending on the flooding. So it would really be a shame if one of those major cities that's downstream of that dam that is scheduled to probably uh, fail within the next couple of severe flooding seasons. One of those cities just happens to be a place you, you might have heard of it before, but it's uh, Wuhan. You ever, any, anybody heard of that one? Yeah, it'd be a real shame if that entire city went uh, underwater. Um, like the CCP cares about the 400,000 people that live there, but I think that there's probably a lab that some people eventually would like to get there and find any kind of evidence or any sort of proof. Wait a minute, is my microphone malfunction? Anyways, Prime Minister Scott Morrison said he saw no benefit to Victoria's deal with Beijing and signaled an agreement would be unlikely to stand under the new laws. God damn. Why is Australia more based than Canada? I don't know. Maybe it's because they have to fight with uh, the local wildlife on a consistent basis. We just got to dodge deer or elk or moose every once in a while. But these motherfuckers, if they walk outside funny, could get sucker punched by a kangaroo. If there are benefits, what are they and what was paid for them? I don't have the answer to those questions at this point, but the assessment of those agreements will continue, Morrison said. Over a thousand deals have been looked at so far. Okay. Under the new laws, states, territories, local governments, and the Australian public universities must notify the foreign affairs minister of existing and proposed foreign arrangements. Uh, hey, you know what? Okay. When it comes to what government should be looking after, the influence of a foreign power, especially the CCP, yeah, um, the federal government should be notified about that stuff and they should be clearing it before any institution that also receives federal funding. Um, signs off on something that could be potentially detrimental, especially when it comes to places like public universities who, I don't know, do research on very sensitive things. I I'm just throwing that out there. I've been notified of over a thousand arrangements, Payne said, noting that the states and territories have completed their initial audits of, oh, of existing arrangements with foreign national governments. She said that the thousand deals she had been notified about and examined reflect the richness and breadth of Australia's international interest and demonstrated the important role played by the states, territories, universities, and local governments in advancing Australia's in interest abroad. I hope we hear of more CCP detrimental deals being axed in the very near future because they aren't good people. They don't have freedom. They don't have the tenets of Western society at heart because they are the natural extension and the ultimate conclusion of these brainlet socialists this is the type of government that they want and somebody finally pushing back god it, it's wonderful to see between scott morrison and the dealer no i'm sorry weakest link host um them axing these you love to see it but let's add another reason as to why the ccp is a terrible place and why they don't have your best interest at heart Beijing asks people to call hotline to report netizens, people of the internet, weird, making illegal history comments. Oh, okay. Uh, that sounds like something that could be coming in the very near future. Canada is going to be receiving hate speech laws online because of, I forget, um, I know he's the heritage minister, but I forget his, uh, Stephen Gibault, I think. Self-hair care aficionado. Man who knows what, uh, 
What paste to pair with plastic soldiers for dinner? He wants to keep the country safe, you know? The people who are here need to make sure that they are safe. And this will eventually become something down the line, right? Because they want to be looking after, oh, people, we need to make sure that people don't hear bad things. But also, you've also heard rumblings, and I'm pretty sure I reported on it. Can't quite pinpoint the date at this point, because the insanity of the Trudeau liberals, it just bleeds into everything. But they also are looking after politicians and mean things that you say to them. And eventually, anything that they've done in the past, you criticize that about, well, that could be an illegal comment. An illegal comment about historical precedent set by previous governments or current and future and the one true government. I don't know. That's where we're heading. Anyways, the Chinese Communist Party is asking citizens to snitch on online internet users who fail to tow Beijing's line when commenting on Chinese history according to a recent announcement by China's cyber regulator. Great. The Cyberspace Administration of China, CAC, two jokes you can go down that path. In an announcement on April 9th, said the long-existing hotline 12377, which allows people to report on online activities such as fraud and rumors. You can report on rumors. Oh, great. Oh, great. And now open to allow people to report on netizens who distort the CCP's history. Not the actual history, just what the party tells you. Attack party leaders and their thoughts and policies and defame national heroes. Well, we already got one prong of that coming. The CAC suckers said that the objective was to crack down on people who spread historical nihilism or disinformation, I suppose, ahead of the CCP's 100th anniversary in July this year. Terrific. You can also celebrate the 100 million people that have been murdered under your murderous party one rule or one party rule. Sorry. It accused these nihilists as individuals with ulterior motives. Oh my god, it accuses these Trumpists and individuals with disinformation campaigns who maliciously distort, denigrate, and neglect the history of the great party, the country, and the military. I need not parody that because it's just so fucking insane. Throughout much of its history, the Chinese regime has waged war against... The concept of historical nihilism, which refers to public, public skepticism about the CCP's narrative of past events. For example, questioning the legacies of former Chinese leaders Deng Xiaoping and Mao Zedong is, considering, oh, is considered a dangerous category of historical nihilism that could threaten the party's right to rule. Wow! Wow. If you guys don't see that this is the logical end of all of these restrictions on your right to speak, on your freedom of expression on online platforms, I, I don't know what to tell you. But that paragraph uh, definitely sends a chill up my spine. Unless people like the Australian government don't start pushing back. Like, that's just one step, okay? Looking at the Belt and Road strategy, realizing that, hey, this is just a soft takeover. Um... It takes more people like that. There are a few senators in the United States. There are two politicians in Canada who are pushing against this. Outside of that, we are vastly outnumbered at this point, and it takes more people standing up. It takes more people voicing their opposition, and I see way too many motherfuckers sticking their head in the goddamn sand just thinking, oh, if I can just get through this right now, I'll just be able to survive, and I can come back, and I can take my claim to the future once I be able to infiltrate their institutions, and I can just get my whatever degree if I need to go to university, if I I can just make a living and I can just keep my head down. Don't worry, they'll eventually come for you. It might be your friend who uh, speaks up for something the first day. And then it might be the other person who says something benign in the cubicle over from you. But eventually, something from your past will come up or something will push you just a little bit too far. But guess what? Nobody's going to have your back because you didn't have their backs. I'm going to paraphrase something that i seen Jordan Peterson post. He was in response to Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro's position is that in which I just described. At least that was the way that it was characterized. I've heard him say similar things like, uh, if you're going to law school, uh, just make sure that you uh, go there, you keep your head down, and then uh, you don't uh, contribute to any of the alumni institutions, and that you just take your law degree, and then you come back, and then eventually you can just voice your opposition to him. Shut up. You're a worthless neocon. Nobody cares. You can make college kids look absolutely retarded, but if put up against anybody of comparable intellectual capacity you look like the beta kid that you've always been the kid that used to get stuffed in the locker in high school no but jordan peterson's refutation of that is if you cheat if you treat yourself to lie if you write down lies you eventually start to absorb those 
characteristics, those attributes, and those lies that you were once telling eventually become the truth that you continue to tell yourself. So if I may paraphrase, I forget which rule it is, but it is from 12 Rules for Life, you know, uh, the Red Skull's handbook, always tell the truth, but at least don't lie. And that is something that the CCP wants you to do. They want you to actively engage in lies, their lies, which are the truth within the borders of the CCP. And thankfully, instead of their desire for global domination, the globalists, at least Australia is pushing back. And I hope more people of power hop on board. Not the nefarious, nebulous term of power where, I don't know, I'm supposed to have the most power in the world. Whatever. How fucking stupid is that? I'm just an asshole with a Chinese microphone. But they start to push back. We'll see how this plays out. It's a big ask, but um, stop it now while it's still relatively small. While they don't have, the CCP doesn't have control of everything. It's a lot more manageable then. With that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.